other people. You have to learn to be politically savvy and develop political intelligence. Now, a lot of us have probably been exposed to emotional intelligence. Have you heard that expression before, where you start to read people and understand how emotions play out? Well, political intelligence is also extraordinarily important, and that's what we're going to talk about now. How you can develop that political intelligence so you can successfully navigate the political dynamics of your organization to accomplish your goals. And I want to stress, you ignore office politics at your own peril. If you don't understand those underlying forces that are going on all around you, you will not be as successful as those who do. It is definitely something that's going to make a positive difference in your life if you learn how to handle it. This is uh, shopping at the office politics superstore. I don't know if that can come through, but you can buy butt kissing gifts for the boss, <laughs> backstabbing implements, uh, software for <laughs> fudging numbers, computer sabotage kits, taking credit for other people's ideas. You get the drill. That's what most people think office politics is. And, and for sure, there is certainly that element. And I, I mean, I think you probably all are doing project-based learning and working in teams, and you've seen people on your teams play office politics, and some of them have tried to do, uh, shopped at the office politics superstore and used it against you. And what we want you to do is learn how to practice defense and be able to be a really good player. So here's the kind of political skills you need to develop. And oh, I understand in normal presentations, we don't put this much information in our slides, we do bullet points, but because I am not giving a speech, but I'm trying to teach you, I put a lot of content in here because I know I was throwing a lot of you at once and I wanted to make sure that it was rich in content. So, uh, mea culpa for putting it all in, but I did it because I think it was something you needed to know. So, political skills you need to develop. Intuition. How good is your intuition? Have you tried to develop it? And women, we, are ten we tend to be better at intuition, so men, I'm going to direct this to you. Try and develop your intuition. Try to learn how to read people. Try to understand when you're in a situation that you can, uh, it's not everything that's being said is what's being done in that room. It's not always what you hear. It's a lot about what you see. Read facial expressions. Look at body language. Use your intuition if somebody comes in late or leaves early. Are they trying to tell you something? Um, you don't want to be the last one to know that you're getting laid off. You know, there's ways that you can read those tea leaves. Um, there's a great line that I love. If you're sitting at a poker table and you don't know who the sucker is, it's probably you. <laughs> Think about that when you're in a meeting. The ability to quickly assess who holds power in a situation and who's just faking it. So there'll be people who are trying to act like they've got all this authority, but they really don't. And so you need to know the difference between real authority and who's given them that authority and how they can wield it and those who just think they have it or want you to think that they're bluffing that they have it. You need to be focused and you need to be very goal-oriented. And I'm going to get into goals in a minute because I think it's one of the most critical things in practicing office politics well is having your goals clear. And you need to develop your relationship expertise, the ability to bring up controversial issues without provoking or offending anyone is such a gift and a skill to develop, you will never regret learning it. It is huge. <coughs> Has anybody had practice doing that? Would want to share a time when they were able to bring something up that was controversial without provoking or offending anyone? All right, well, the very fact that you can't even think of one or don't want to reveal it shows we need to work on that. So, the ability to develop and appropriately use political self-defense techniques when necessary. So, self-defense is when you think you're under attack, when you think that somebody is backstabbing you, what do you do about it? We're going to look at that, too. So, you need, there are things you can do. You don't have to go on the offensive, but you can take necessary maneuvers to help protect yourself and change that up. Impression management, and they, by that they mean what kind of impression do you make? When you, you, we know a lot about first impressions, but in business you're going to have numerous times. Um, perhaps every week there's a, there's a all staff meeting, and every time that meeting occurs, you have a new chance to make a good impression. You have a new 
chance to go in there and ask for the hardest project to be assigned to you, the hardest challenge, to be the one who maybe does the drudge work that nobody else wants to do, to be that good team player. You have, you have a constant chance to change people's impression or to improve their impression of you by your willingness to go the extra mile and do more and to challenge yourself. And out of that, you develop leverage. And leverage is another really important con concept because what happens with leverage is, is you can take something that you've gained and then grow it bigger. So leverage could be something where you do somebody a favor and then you're able later to ask that person to repay the favor for something far greater than the kind of favor you gave them. That, that reciprocity is so important, but you can leverage your reciprocity so that you're getting them back a lot more than you gave. And then wisdom and discipline. This is really hard because especially if you're going into a company as a new employee or you've gotten a promotion into a new department, you don't always know who is somebody that is on the, the shit list in that department or is not well uh, liked or held in high esteem. So you want to avoid the troublemakers as best you can and understand the chain of command and be friendly with your coworkers, but don't gossip. And remember to support your boss. It is one of the most critical things you'll learn is that you may have a boss you don't necessarily like or respect, but you have to support that person because if you don't, you're going to have a very bad experience, which I'm going to tell you about in a little bit. Another cartoon. Here is a, what happens around office politics. You've got a person leaving and everybody's walking around, who's going to make me coffee now? Who can I bitch about now? Who can I sexually intimidate now? Who can I belittle now? Who run my errands? So here's one person who played all these roles for different people, and they're all saying, we're going to miss you, because they realize now that they've lost that, that person that was sort of their person that they went to to pick on and do things to. So you want to make sure you have the ability to use the organizational grapevine wisely, that you understand that your technical skills, and then don't just say technical, but whatever skills you're bringing into that job, be it your college degree or your knowledge of computers or your experience in Costa Rica, it's no longer sufficient just for you to be a success. You have to have the political skills to go with it. And political savvy is one of the most essential leadership skills that you can develop. Political savvy. If you leave here tonight with one thing, I hope it's that. So, this cartoon is at least a little. So, the, 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 they're saying, here's all these people searching all over the room, and the caption is, there seems to be some difficulty in locating the hidden agenda. <laughs> Ever been there? Yeah. You know something else is going on, you're not quite sure, and you've been trying to figure out, what do these people really want? You know, what's really going on here? That's what they're trying to say. So, how do you win? First and foremost, you set goals. And we said and, uh, to our juniors who are in this exploring business class, you have to know yourself. You can't set goals until you know yourself. And this is another line that I just love. If you're not sure where you're going, you'll probably end up somewhere else. You've got to be clear. You've got to be focused. You have to have a direction. Because if you don't, you won't go anywhere. So give me some understanding of kind of goals that you think you might want to set as, a, as an employee playing office politics. Yes? Gain the respect of your coworkers. Gain the respect of your coworkers. Yes. Anyone, anyone else? They, you know, I put in videos, I put in cartoons, <laughs> I'm like trying really hard here yeah, to, to get you guys, you know, engaged, you know, work with me. Yes? That would be great. And then, you know, not everybody wants to climb the career ladder. Some people want to go to work. They want to work nine to five. They want it to be comfortable. They want to earn a decent salary. But this isn't the, the, where they're going to get their, their, their passion. Their passion may be something outside from coaching soccer or being involved with their church or, or doing environmental projects. Then, you know, you can't always get everything that drives you from work. But you still have to have goals. So if your goal isn't the climbing career ladder, then it's maybe to have a more comfortable workplace 
or working conditions or things like that. So when you think about your goals, you want to think beyond just, you know, maybe upward mobility and maybe something, you know, different. So here's some personal goals. Do you want to stay with your current organization or find a different place to work? You know, maybe you've been there a year, you think you've gotten as far as you're going to go in that company or you've learned what you wanted to learn and now it's time to move on. Do you want to remain in the same field or consider a different occupation? Would you like a more comfortable relationship with your boss? That's another big one, whether you're trying to climb the ladder or you want to stay in your position. Having a better relationship with your boss can be tremendously uh, important and reassuring. Do you want to be given more challenging and interesting assignments? Are you interested in getting promoted in the, or expanding your responsibilities? Do you want more recognition for your contributions or accomplishments? Would you like a better working relationship with certain people or departments? Do you simply want to keep your current job in order to finance the rest of your life? And here's another really important thing. There's a big difference between having a goal and having a wish. So if you look at these wishes up here, can you see the difference? I wish that I could make more money. That's not a goal. I wish I had gotten that promotion instead of Susan. That's not a goal. I wish that my boss wasn't such a moron. Who doesn't? You know, I wish my employees would pay attention to deadlines. I wish a headhunter would call and offer me a job. That's very passive, and it's not goal-driven. And what are you going to get from a wish? You're not going to get much, because wishes just are statements. They're not, there's no action behind a wish. And it's turning over your power to somebody else when you do a wish. You need to think about what, what ties in to make that go from a wish to a goal. So, you could switch that to say, I'm going to develop these skills I need for a higher paying job. I will ask my manager about how to prepare myself for the next available promotion. I'm going to start communicating in a more positive way with my boss. I'm going to discuss the important deadlines. You get the drift. So it's turning a wish into a goal, into an action item, into something that you can do, that you take responsibility for, and that you can implement, and you have control over. So goals imply action. Wishes imply sitting around and waiting for something to happen. And who wants to do that? You know, you sit back and wait, you're going to be waiting maybe forever. Second, network. We have spent a ton of time in our talks about networking. And I feel bad that those of you who, uh, who are juniors didn't get to come to the net social networking session where we did, where we talked about the importance of using social media, LinkedIn and Facebook, and all those different ways that you can network. And as you uh, get older and get more exposure, the most, the most important thing you can do is continue to build your network. I have probably over 10,000 people in my network having been involved in politics and, and sales and now in, in this uh, advocacy for business. So it is a tremendous asset to have a network that's so big and that you have access to. And all those different people, when somebody needs something, they say, oh, I know that person. Or I know somebody who could do that. And you will just be amazed at how much you can leverage your network, how helpful it can be. And one of the important things is to not just network at your own level. You want to build bridges with people <coughs> above you and below you. And, and do that by reaching out to them. Take the first step. Invite somebody to coffee uh, or lunch and find that common interest. There was a, a great story about this man who was a manager. And he didn't want to network with anybody above him because he thought that was brown nosing. And he thought, you know, I, I just don't want to do that. And it was pointed out to him, well, you have people working underneath you, and don't you appreciate it when they come to you and ask for advice, and, and you can help them with the project and things like that? And, you know, what do you think about people like this? He says, well, those are the people that I love to work with. Those are the ones I want to promote. He said, well, why would you shut yourself out of doing that, going above and letting people get to know you in upper management? How would upper management know you even want more if you don't have any connection with them, that you don't reach out to them, that they don't even know who you are because you've avoided recognition, you've avoided connecting with them. And the man had the light bulb on and said, oh my God, yeah, that makes sense. And he ended up networking with people above and got a terrific promotion. But before that, nobody knew who he was because he just refused to do that. And so those are the kinds of things you've got to think about. You've got to go above you and below you. And one thing that you'll find out is that everybody who is under you could end up being over you at some point, and people who are above you could end up being under you at some point. So there is a uh, mobile ladder of, uh, 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 I can't think of the right word, people move up and down the career ladder all the time. So just because you're below somebody at one point doesn't mean you won't end up being their boss and vice versa, which is why you want to play nice, which is why
closer. Even if you don't like people, network with them anyway. Still try to have a relationship because it's important to have an understanding of what they're thinking, what they're doing, and you really don't want to shut those people out of your lives just because you don't like them. You may find out that if you've got to know them better, there is something you like about them. Or you may find out that you're going to be thrown together and you're going to have to work with them. And so the more you can try and relate to everybody and build that common ground, the better you're going to be in, in moving forward in your own career. Turn your enemies into allies. This was something that I prided myself on when I was in politics. As you know, if you're any good as a politician, you make enemies. If you're trying to please everybody, you're pleasing nobody. So you're going to take a position, you take a stand, and somebody's not going to be happy you chose that position, that you decided to support this project or not support that project. And it was my goal to go out when I had this decision that I knew that people weren't happy with that and meet with them and try and reestablish a relationship and, and build that common ground again so that we could agree to disagree on this particular, particular project or this particular vote, but it didn't mean that I wasn't going to be there for them on 90% of the other things and to reestablish that connection. So it's really important to remember that, that, that you will probably want to relate with these people at other times. So today's junior jerk is tomorrow's senior partner. This is another big thing we talked about earlier. Help people. Do somebody a favor. Go that little bit extra. It is a really, really good social lubricant that you would reach out and help somebody. Um, if somebody has a big project due the next day and they're staying there and you're walking out the door at 6 o'clock and see their swamp, go and help them. They will really appreciate it and they're going to remember it. And maybe the next time you need some help, they'll be there for you. And again, relationships are what politics are all about and relationships are built on reciprocity. Don't burn bridges. Remain as much as you can on good terms with everyone. Don't send an email when you're mad. That's really a mistake. <laughs> Flamers, you've all heard about people sending out an email when they're furious and, and then like, you know, the next day they realize, oh my God, I used the wrong words. I shouldn't have sent it to everybody. Huge mistake. And you can't take it back. That's when you have to play defense, and I can give you some tips on that, but it's really bad to act any time in anger in the workplace. So you don't want to yell at somebody in public, you don't want to throw a hissy fit, you don't want to send a flaming email, all those kinds of things. Step back, calm down, and remember where you are and why you're there. Again, this is what you don't want to do. Can you read it, or do I need to read it? It says... It's a guy laying right by his keyboard, and he says, what do you mean I'm too drunk to email my boss? I can typo bus fine. Besides, I flaunt him to think I'm burping late. <laughs> he's drunk. He's saying stupid stuff. But the point is, he's laying there typing something into his boss when he's loaded. Not a good idea. So humor. Whoops. Humor in the office, and that is something I think is really tricky. Um, everybody's very sensitive about what's funny and what's not funny. One of the biggest shocks to me when I was on the Board of Supervisors is we got sued for harassment by someone who uh, got promoted and went to their desk and that had been cleaned out with the exception of one of those stupid, dirty joke books had been left in the back of the desk, and he found it and sued the county. And, you know, it was the kind of, it was like an old dirty joke book, so they weren't really, really dirty like you would think, but he, he was offended, and he sued the county. So you just have to be really careful, because what you think is funny, and it may be funny to your inside group, or to your age group, or whatever, is probably not funny to somebody else. <coughs> so you, you got to really tone it down when you're in the workplace. And it's for your own protection because, one, you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, and two, you certainly don't want to hurt yourself in not getting a promoted promotion of being, uh, as they say, the class clown rarely ends up as the CEO. That's not what you're there for. You're not there to crack jokes. You're there to get your job done. And uh, you can really close a lot of doors to yourself if you offend the wrong people. 
Other thing, keep romance out of the office. You don't want to play in your own backyard. It is a big mistake. And uh, you've heard the classic stories of the office Christmas party and people get loaded and the wrong people hook up and there you go. Somebody has to leave and it's usually you. So if you don't want to do that, do not do that. And, and if you do end up falling in love with somebody in your workplace, chances are one of you should take another job because it's just going to put yourself in a lot of jeopardy. Keep your personal life out of the office. This is one place where too much information is way too much information. Um, there's a lot of things that you may, at your at early age, think, you know, you're very open. I've seen what a lot of people put up on Facebook. You put that in the workplace, people are going to use it against you. And you just really don't want to put yourself in that position that people can have stuff that they can use against you. And you saw in that video where the guy posted that he was out partying on Facebook and his boss didn't see it, but one of his co-workers went to his boss and told him, there's people in there who are going to be jockeying for position. And the position that they want may be the position you want, and some of them will play dirty. Some of them will, you know, if you leave the door open, they're going to walk right through and use it against you. So it's really important to, to think about what the appropriate level of uh, relationship is. You want to know them, you want to be friendly, but you don't want to let people know that much about your personal life. And certainly anything confidential should be kept confidential. Be careful about office friendships. Your colleagues, as I've said, today may become your competitors or your enemies tomorrow. And ask yourself two questions. Has a friend ever turned on me in the past? I think most of us have seen that happen. And what would happen to my career if the person I'm considering friending were to become my enemy? What, what, what kind of damage could they do? Don't put yourself in that position. And get real about work. I think this is so important for you as you're starting out in your careers and, and, and really looking to the future. You need to be focused on working. When you're in the, at work, in your job, you want to be there doing your job. You're not going to be there going and, and schmoozing by the coffee and hanging out in the parking lot and, you know, if you smoke or taking your 10 smoke breaks a day, all that kind of stuff. Give your boss a fair day's work and you will be rewarded for it. And watch and seize opportunities as they present themselves. This next one is a really good one and, and it's something that took me a while to learn, so I hope that you heed it. When you have a problem, the best thing you can do is not go to your manager with that problem until you can also provide a solution or two to that problem to the manager. He will love you for it because you can only imagine how hard it is to go and have somebody bring you an issue when you've got 20 issues already and then say, but here's what we can do about it. That is the kind of proactivity that really helps you win at office politics. So here's a poor guy. If you can tell, his back is all scratched and his shirt's ripped off and it says, you stood up at the meeting and 